Hello everyone, uh, my name is Anna Meštrović. Uh, I'm Associate Professor at the Department of Informatics, University of Rijeka. I'm going to present you a joint work with uh, my colleague Slobodan Beliga, who is a postdoctoral student at the, the University of Rijeka. Um, I'm going to speak about how artificial intelligence can help in analysis of information spreading on social media during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So now I'm going to start with the presentation. So this is a research of InfoCoV project, which is funded by the Croatian Science Foundation. The goals of this project are uh, to develop and use artificial intelligence-based approaches for analysis of information spreading and to perform information monitoring in general uh, in order to help in solving problems caused by COVID-19 infodemic. In our research, we combine two scientific fields, natural language processing and social network analysis. Uh, this is why, uh, because uh, this gives us a better insight uh, into two aspects of information spreading. Uh, the first is semantic content, and the second is uh, network structure, which is also important aspects uh, of information spreading. So natural language processing uh, is focused on the tasks such as keyword extraction, topic modeling, name entity recognition, text classification, sentiment analysis, and so on. While uh, uh, social network analysis uh, give us insight into spreading dynamics, network structure, influencer, uh, communities of, uh, in the network, and some other uh, um, information. Um, so, the first question may be, is information spreading similar to disease spreading? Well, there are some similarities between these two phenomena. Uh, for example, both phenomena can be modeled as a complex network where uh, people are uh, nodes and uh, links are some relations between persons. Uh, and both networks, for example, um, may have these uh, special nodes uh, called hubs, which are actually a super spreaders. Because, for example, we know that in the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, there are some persons who um, may infect much more people than others. And also in social networks, there are some people who post much more messages uh, in the social media uh, than uh, other people. So all these nodes are called super spreaders. However, there are many parameters uh, that influence uh, the spreading. And we may see in the case of COVID-19 that actually it was very hard to find, to, to, to define a model which uh, can give us good predictions of COVID-19 spreading. And um, the similar thing is actually with information spreading. And for example, we uh, maybe mm, you are familiar uh, right now after the year of the pandemic with these uh, models for uh, inform for pandemic and disease spreading called uh, SAR, SIR, and some uh, extensions of this model. But um, in the case of COVID, uh, these models were not uh, working uh, fine. And also for information spreading, um, this model would not work. Uh, for uh, disease spreading models, it's important to know some, some properties of virus, while for information spreading, uh, it's important to know some properties of uh, text messages which are spreading. And that is why natural language processing is uh, an important field. This is a field of artificial intelligence, which uh, is actually focused on how to program computers to process and analyze large amounts of natural language data, textual data, textual messages, and so on. Basically, it uh, enables computer to somehow understand the human language. And there are uh, some standard artificial intelligence-based approaches um, like machine learning, 
And in the last decade, the most popular is uh, the variant of this machine learning called deep learning, which is based on deep neural networks. And these uh, approaches may be used in natural language processing in some um, tasks uh, like, for example, text classification. And I will try to show you uh, simplified versions of these uh, solutions for uh, these tasks. Um, and I will show you some, some simplified examples of that. So text classification may be a topic classification in which we need to decide uh, which uh, topic to assign to text. And actually, we need to develop a model which can assign this uh, topic uh, automatically. In a sentiment analysis, the model should assign a sentiment of a text uh, to a text automatically and the sentiment may be positive negative or neutral attitude in the in this message then also um, in automatic detection of fake news the model should assign to the text is it fake or true news in detection of hate speech the model should assign uh, is it um, uh, text uh, hate speech or regular speech and there are some similar uh, examples um, more. Uh, on these figures, you can see uh, also a simplified architecture of these neural networks, which uh, may learn how to uh, assign a, a, a proper class to a text. So on the input, you have always text, and on the output, you have these possible classes, but the model should um, decide which class uh, is uh, um, statistically uh, the one that is um, uh, th that belongs to this uh, text and in between we have uh, this hidden layer uh, but as I said this is a simplified version in the deep neural networks this we have a lot of these hidden layers and the same architecture that we have for the sentiment analysis may be um, uh, applied for um, uh, hate speech detection or fake news detection or topic classification. I mean, the architecture is not the same, but it is the similar because it uses these deep neural networks or neural networks to learn how to classify the text. So uh, lately, this text classification task is usually performed in two steps. In the first steps, we need to develop to train the language model. And in the last decade, especially in the last three years, there are many powerful models uh, uh, have been developed. Uh, these models uh, learned um, how to represent the text from really large textual corpora, from whole Wikipedia and large number of texts published on the internet. And the result is that uh, each word and uh, text can be represented as a vector, as a numer set of numerical values, which can capture the semantic of the text. And that means that uh, in this semantic vector space, uh, the words and the sentences which are semantically similar will be closed in this semantic vector space. And uh, some texts which are not so similar will be uh, not so close in this uh, semantic vec vector space. It is also a simplified view of this semantic vector space. Usually these vectors have the dimensionality of 200 or 500. And this is still a very low dimensionality for machine learning, because in some cases uh, there, uh, it is much higher number of numerical values and features. And uh, the good thing is that we actually can use these existing models like BERT, this is the name of one very powerful and very popular model, but usually these models are trained uh, for English language and, for example, for Croatian language, we have uh, not so many models uh, trained. But then in the second step, we can uh, fine tune this existing model on some specific task. And this task can be this fake news detection, sentiment analysis, detection of hate speech or some topic classification. 
And this task, uh, we need to have manually annotated data set with classes. And we, this is called then supervised learning. And uh, it is actually based on the thing that neural network can learn from these existing examples, how to uh, classify a new text. For example, in the case of our experiments and our research, we now perform this sentiment analysis on of Twitter COVID-19 messages, and we have a data set of 10,000 um, already manually annotated tweets with classes negative or neutral or positive attitude in the tweet. And then we may perform this fine tuning uh, and learning uh, how to recognize the sentiment of uh, new text. And this learning is based on deep neural networks. Uh, this figure is, again, one example of learning uh, and classifying, uh, for example, text in a fake or true uh, news. Uh, we have these uh, two classes, and this text is uh, by using embedding method, which is this, which uses this language model learned from large text corpora, which is based on this um, uh, sophisticated and very um, complex structure of um, uh, deep neural network. By using this structure, this uh, text can be represented as a vector, and then the system again can learn from this annotated corpora is that uh, fake or true news. But if we think um, a little bit more, then if we have this message in uh, uh, social media, then maybe uh, the content itself is not enough to recognize is it fake or true news. What I wanted to say, maybe we have more information, not only this content. And we really have, if we have the message on the uh, textual message, which is spreading on the social media, then we have some information about social network in which this information is spreading and also the dynamics, how fast this message is spreading. And in our approach, in our research, we actually want to combine three aspects of information spreading, content, context, and dynamics, and we represent each textual message as a vector called multi-layer embedding, which is composed from three separate vectors, which are um, extracted as numerical values from three different information sources, text content, uh, information, uh, I mean, social network as a context, and dynamics of uh, spreading. And we believe that this will give us better results in uh, prediction and text classification. And we already um, performed some preliminary experiments uh, with this uh, COVID uh, tweet, and uh, we published uh, this paper on MIPRO conference. Here we define two classes, uh, highly spreadable tweets and lowly spreadable tweets, according to the number of retweets which one tweet has. That is a kind of information spreading on Twitter by uh, looking at how many uh, retweets this information have, how many times this information were shared on Twitter. And we developed or actually trained a classifier based on neural network uh, using data set of 100,000 tweets in creation language posted in, uh, in, during the last year. And for this experiment, we used a language model called fast text, which is, uh, which, has, which is already trained for creation language. So we didn't need to train the model again. We just used the existing model. And by using this model, we transform each tweet into one vector. Uh, in this case, this is just the first part of the vector, the content vector, but we wanted to see if we can predict something with this vector. And first we look at the uh, original data set and we define this data set into two subsets, uh, COVID tweets and non-COVID tweets. Non-COVID tweets uh, uh, is uh, actually much larger a data set than this data set of COVID tweets. And then we look at the percentage of highly spreadable tweets in this data set. So for uh, all data set, the percentage of highly spreadable tweets is 43.3%. Uh, while in the uh, only COVID, non-COVID data set, the percentage of highly spreadable tweets is less than 40%. And in the COVID data set, the percentage of highly spreadable tweets is 
75%, which means that uh, tweets, COVID tweets have on average higher spreadability, much higher actually. And we want to confirm that by um, performing some additional now experiments in which we test uh, some artificially made uh, data set. Uh, actually, we use this um, non-COVID data set and uh, add uh, some words related to coronavirus in each tweet. So if we add word coronavirus in a non-COVID tweet, in every non-COVID tweet, the percentage of highly spreadable tweets in this uh, data set will increase, and it is 56.7%. Uh, but if we add some arbitrary word like car or music, the percentage of highly spreadable tweets is less than 30%. And these results were very interesting to us, and we will analyze them uh, more. Um, and for our whole research, we collect a, a large data sets uh, of COVID texts. Uh, we collected more than 100,000 articles from online news portals in Croatian language posted from the beginning of, of the pandemic. Then we collect more than 500,000 uh, comments of users on that uh, articles. We collect uh, the whole Twitter network of users registered in Croatia, and we collect post COVID posts from Twitter, Reddit, Croatian Forum, and YouTube. And then we analyze uh, this data. First, we, are, uh, we were focused on uh, these news articles because we wanted to see what content was present uh, in the uh, public in, in news media during the pandemic. And this is called information monitoring. We wanted to see, for example, which topics, which words, which terms was the most frequent terms in these articles uh, and uh, how these trends were changing during time. And we analyzed uh, the percentage of overlap in the uh, top three, uh, in the top 300 most frequent terms across 13 months of the pandemics. And here you can see that during the summer, actually from May to September, the overlapping between um, these top uh, 300 highly mentioned uh, terms or uh, keywords or topics in articles um, was, was very high uh, and while uh, during other months the uh, overlap was not so high. Uh, this may be um, explained by the fact that during the summer the restrictions uh, in Croatia uh, related to COVID-19 was lower and uh, the, the articles was writing uh, all the time about some similar things. There were uh, happening um, nothing new with coronavirus. While during the at the beginning and uh, at the end of this year, there are many new topics present in the public. And uh, on this picture of right, you can see um, how we analyze the pandemic-related terms, and we compare the frequency of this term. Uh, uh, during the first and the second wave of the pandemic. And we, here we can see that most of the pandemic-related terms are uh, equally represented in the first and in the second wave in these newspapers, articles. Uh, however, there are some terms that are um, that were most present at the, in the first wave, and these are some medicines that um, uh, seem to be helpful for uh, cure COVID-19, like um, Sumamed, hydrochloroxine, and paracetamol. And there, uh, the deficiency was, was mentioned very often in this, in this first wave, and not in the second. And in the second wave, uh, the focus was uh, on vaccination. So we can see here uh, how um, this analysis actually reflects uh, the, the real state and content uh, during the pandemic. Uh, we also wanted to analyze if there are some correlation between number of uh, published uh, COVID articles and number of uh, COVID-19 cases uh, per day. 
Uh, however, we find that there is no statistically significant uh, correlation. It actually means that uh, online portals and news media are constantly writing about coronavirus and then the percentage of COVID articles is um, around 40% uh, on average. While uh, the number of infected people in the first and second wave uh, was very different. Then we analyze the entities in, uh, in these articles and we use the name entity recognition methods from NLP to automatically extract persons, locations and institutions from text. And then we analyze how these trends were changing uh, during 13 months. So uh, we can see that, for example, um, in the case of person, this overlapping between 13 months uh, are uh, less than for uh, locations and for institution. It means that uh, articles were writing about different persons all the time during the pandemic. Uh, and these persons uh, were actually related to pandemic and mentioned in the COVID-19 related articles. While locations and institutions are always the same, and it also has sense because the borders were closed and we were writing mainly about locations in Croatia uh, and also institutions in Croatia, except some, um, national, some, some international institutions like World Health Organization. So to conclude, uh, this infodemic brings a lot of challenges uh, in terms of massive communication data sets, large number of actors involved in, in this communication in social media, because during the lockdown, for example, many people were active on uh, social media and social networks because this was practically the only way of, way of communication. Then the new terminology is present and uh, the various domains and topics. So it's not only about medicine and healthcare, it's about economy, politics, education, sport. And we actually know that the pandemic affected uh, different aspects of our life. Um, and artificial intelligence may help here uh, with infodemic management. Um, it has powerful methods based on deep learning and neural networks. And um, we think that promising approach for this information monitoring is to combine methods from natural language processing and social network analysis, because that, that is how we can capture message content and spreading on, of this message in social media. And I hope that I will, with this presentation, I give you a little bit insight into how it can be done uh, by using um, artificial intelligence and neural uh, networks and natural language processing in general. So for this research, I have to thank the whole my team. Uh, there are five of us from the Department of Informatics, except Slobodan and me here as a professor, Sanda Martins Vishipšić, and our two PhD students, Karlo Babic and Milan Petrovic. And we also have three consultants, Mihela Matešić, uh, Associate Professor at the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences, uh, expert in linguistics, Marko Pranić, PhD student at the Institute of Jozef Stefan in Slovenia, expert in NLP, and Zoran Levnajic, uh, associate professor at Faculty of Information Studies in Novo Mesto, who is a physicist and an uh, expert in domain of complex networks and social network analysis. And I would like to thank you for your attention and I would like to thank the organizers of Festival of Science um, for giving me opportunity uh, to present uh, our research on uh, this event. So uh, I hope you learned something and I want to say you goodbye. <laughs>